when I was out in Utah last, I took a couple of Explorer hubs with me, took them to my cousin and uncle's shop, and we did this. So a key part of having a reliable drift car is being able to beat the crap out of the drivetrain and have it not break. I've had some pretty bad luck in the past with my rear-wheel drive converted Legacy, probably more so than most people have. And that's what made me want to do this so bulletproof and so overbuilt the way I'm doing it. So one of the big issues when you rear-wheel drive convert a Subaru is the rear end. The R160 is just really tiny. The axles that pop into it are even tinier. They break all the time. So if you upgrade axles, the next thing to go is your diff. You can upgrade to an R180, which is the STI rear differential, but good luck finding one of those for any decent, reasonable price. So the reason I chose the Ford rear end, I can pick up a rear differential for 60 bucks at any junkyard near me. It's a huge rear differential. There's a ton of aftermarket available for it. Same thing with cost versus durability of my axles. I'm using stock Ford Explorer axles. I've talked to a few guys who do drift STIs, they have the R180 in the back, and the only real successful way to deal with the axles is to buy drive shaft shop rear axles, which are like four to six hundred bucks. My Ford Explorer axles are sixteen dollars at the junkyard. Probably one of the most popular rear differential swaps on a full rear-wheel drive drift Subaru is a rear differential out of a Nissan. There's just not a lot of Nissans in my area. And so again, picking up just the differential, a stock open differential with crappy gearing was gonna be like $400. If I'm gonna be doing fabrication to fit an R200, why not do a little bit more fabrication to get an even bigger and cheaper rear differential and axles to fit? It's just kind of a no brainer. So the way they do it when they put a Nissan rear diff in is machine down a Nissan hub to fit in your Subaru wheel bearing. Super cool, and then you can use stock length axles, and it just all fits. Taking that idea of machining the hub down to fit in the wheel bearing, I just need to find a big enough wheel bearing that will fit the bore of a Ford Explorer hub, and then find a bearing that's a bolt-on modular bearing. So I went through and looked at hundreds of wheel bearings, comparing inner bores to a Ford Explorer hub outer bore. I came across a Honda NSX rear wheel bearing. The bore is surprisingly close to an Explorer one, and they were on closeout on Rock Auto, so I got a bunch of them for really cheap, like $6 for an NSX wheel bearing. They're these big, robust supercar wheel bearings, and they're gonna be great. Now the issue was to fit the hub in the wheel bearing. The only thing I could not find through all of my research for months, trying to figure out tolerances between a hub and a wheel bearing and what that tolerance, the difference in size needed to be for it to be the perfect fit. Cause you don't want it to be undersized. The hub will spin in the bearing instead of the bearing spinning. And you don't want it to be too big. It can be slightly over large and you can press the hub into the bearing and the bearing will basically eat itself because you're pressing in something that's too big and you'll get premature bearing failure. I never really found any good information on what those tolerances should be. I figured all I had to do was take the inner diameter of the stock Explorer wheel bearing and compare that to the inner diameter of the Honda NSX wheel bearing. Take that difference and machine that much off of the hub. Seems like that's all it takes. Now, unfortunately, the lathe work that I have done in the past has been on some really expensive lathes that you could get very, very precise with. Going to my uncle's shop, things weren't that precise. So that's actually a fairly large gap. Yeah, it's got like just a hair of clay. That's good though. Yeah. Let me try this side. Yeah, see if there's any different. Yeah, this is the same? Or is one? Bit, this one's a little bit bigger. Oh, there you go. I think it really is just accounting for 
Right. Right. Out of brownness. Right. But this is the, the gold. That's the one where, yeah, that's our, what we want. So I basically got to get this down to. And so we just kind of went for it. So the machining I'm doing on the face of the hub is so that I can fit the wheels I want to use on the hub. Now this is a Ford Explorer hub and so it's made to fit truck wheels. So car wheels tend to have a smaller hub bore than truck wheels and so I needed to machine this down a bit for it to fit. So another component that makes this a little more confusing, I'm using 2015 Ford Mustang GT rear brakes. And so the rear rotor is hub centric. The Explorer hub has a ring for the Explorer rear rotor to be hub centric. And so we had to machine that inner lip down to fit Ford Mustang rear rotor and have it be as hub centric as possible. And then the outer, the main bulk of that bore has to be able to fit wheels. And so we machine that a little smaller. I had all of these dimensions in my notes. I had been doing a ton of research to figure out how all of this would work together and finally coming out to Utah going to the machine shop and actually doing it was really cool it feels like it feels like a good fit sweet like a normal like, yeah like a normal like bearing a normal, how a normal bearing should go on should always fit in there. That was like, dude, something really screwed up. Cool. But yeah, I guess I don't need to because it's going yeah, on from the front. That's how we want it. I don't, that fits really good though, I'm pleased. Yeah, that's great. Good move. What kind of finish, like, that's not even, like, I guess that's probably what it was similar to on the other one, right? Yeah, I was yeah. feeling it. You could kind of feel the lines a little bit. Right. That's why I sanded it just a little right, bit. Right, right. It probably wants some kind of friction in there. Yeah. Sweet. It felt like a normal bearing. Yeah. Thrust, get the hammer and yeah. give it a little bit, not too much. Right. No, that's that, sweet. that that's great. This pleases me. This is gonna, spin the other one this is gonna be great. <laughs> that's the key to it all. Okay. Yeah, I hope it works out. Well, it will, you'll make it work. Yeah, if it doesn't, I'll do something else and make it work, so. Because I'm already, I'm already committed. Basically, it doesn't sound like an expensive upgrade either. Just more time consuming. Yeah, that's and that's the thing. Like, there's a Ford rear end so easy to find at the junkyard. Sixty bucks at the junkyard. <laughs> axles, axles are sixteen bucks at the yard. Like, <laughs> it's like not expensive at all. But the hard part is. Awesome. Way awesome. The old one does not fit good. Oh no. We wrecked it. <laughs> they spin a bearing every time. Dude, that's sweet. Feels nice. Whoop, whoop. 
glad that worked. Wait, have you seen this done before you said? Uh, you with, thought, with Nissan stuff. Right, but you've never seen it with the Ford. No. And you just started looking at specs to see if, what you can do? Yeah, so I went through like 800 wheel bearings looking at the bore to try and find one that would fit. It was close. That was close. This is a Subaru look pattern. Like no, this is Ford. This is 5x4.5. What's the Subaru? 5x100. They are fives? Yeah. I but, have one. I just haven't. But I'm no. doing... Uh, so I have like stock five spoke aluminum rims that I'm using in the front and then I have I found steely five like five spoke steelies which are almost identical they're just steelies and they're 17s instead of 16s but they're off a of Ford Fusion. Oh, I see. And so it's going to look fairly close yeah to the same rim. Yeah. Still no big deal. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha